Good afternoon, everyone, and I'd like to welcome us all to the uh, June meeting of the Murfreesboro Parks and Recreation Commission, and I'd like to call this meeting to order. And to start off, we'll have the prayer and pledge, and if I can ask Dr. Gloria Bonner. Well, thank you so much, and before we bow in prayer, I am just happy to announce and welcome to the Academy of Learning now, Dr. Trey Duke, who graduated May 8th at MTSU in the Department of Educational Leadership, the Bob Womack Department of Educational right. Leadership. Congratulations on receiving your doctorate degree. Thank you, Dr. Bonner. Congratulations. <laughs> May we bow. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to serve in a manner worthy of you, displaying admirable character, moral courage, and personal integrity. Help us to fully please you in all things, bearing fruit in every good work, and steadily growing in the knowledge of you with deeper faith clear insight and fervent love for your precepts. In your son's name, we pray, amen. 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 Now ready for the pledge. <clears throat> pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Bonner. Okay, commission members, you have in front of you minutes from our meeting last month. If you'll take a second and review those, and then I'll accept, a, hopefully, a motion to accept those minutes. I move approval of the minutes as submitted. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. Thank you very much. We'll move on to new business. And uh, first in line is uh, Brittany Garrett. And Brittany, you're going to tell us a little bit about a uh, lost and found policy, maybe. Good afternoon, uh, commission members. Uh, thank you for having me. We had found over uh, the last few months that each facility had all kinds of different uh, lost and found policies. So NPR. D staff has come up with one policy for all uh, parks and rec facilities. Um, basically, when an item comes in, uh, our staff members will tag it and date it. it any valuable items will be secured uh, in a safe. Um, it will stay at that location uh, for 30 days. After 30 days, it will go into a designated location in the center of town. Um, and then it will stay for five more months. Anything valuable after 30 days will be uh, turned over to the police. Um, after the six months total still hasn't been claimed, we will donate the items to nonprofit, non resale organizations uh, like Greenhouse Ministries. Any questions? Very good. Questions for Brittany? Rick. Let's do the bite. <laughs> We'll wait on Rick for a second. Seems like a long time. <laughs> yeah, um, we found out some of the seniors, um, it takes them a little longer to realize they've lost something. So to keep it consistent, uh, we, we're we going to keep it. So, um, Eddie, is that right? I was like, what the heck? <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes, I wouldn't know. Yeah. Do you remember what the question was, Eddie? <laughs> I wouldn't know. Come on, Rick. And sometimes, like, We'll have used sports equipment. They leave it the last day of the season. They don't realize guess, they've yeah. missed it. Till the first day, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. I just, it seemed like we'd be holding stuff for a long time, but it does make sense. I That's just, why we, uh, some areas can keep it for six months. That's why we've located a designated area um, to put it for six months, and then uh, we'll rotate it out. Yeah. Very good. I'll move for approval unless there's other questions. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. Thank you. Thank you, Brittany. Okay, next item on the agenda, Mr. Arbit. 
How are you today, sir? I'm doing well, sir. Glad to be here. Um, currently at the Adams Tennis Complex on the weekends, uh, we have winter and summer sessions, and the hours are 8 to 5 p.m. on Saturday, 11 to 6, I'm sorry, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Sunday. Uh, we did a survey with our members and have decided that we would like to adjust those. The new weekend schedule during the winter, we would stay open one additional hour on Saturday, and that would be 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., and we would keep our Sunday hour from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then during the summer, we would like to go back to the 8 to 5 and the 11 to 5 on Sunday. Uh, we feel like that this will only impact about eight hours a year. It is something that our members were looking for. As you know, we're very busy in the winter hours, so this would add an additional hour on Saturday that they could come in and play tennis. A lot of times our block times end at four on Saturday, which only really gives us an extra hour, and people just really need two hours to play a match or to do a block time. So by adding this additional hour, it will definitely give uh, more opportunities for people to play during the winter months. Uh, if the rec recommendation is approved by the commission, we would like to start this this Sunday, June the 6th. Be glad to answer any questions. Any questions for Mr. Arbit? Do I have a motion to accept the recommendation? <coughs> so moved. Second. All in favor say aye. <coughs> aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. I think you have another item, Mr. Arbit. I do, yes, sir. Uh, currently, the Adams Tennis Complex, if a member so chooses when they buy a membership, they can uh, take part in a payment plan with an initial down payment and then a $50 a month payment until their membership is paid off. What we've realized by doing this is that it basically gives us an outstanding balance over that 10 months that we would like to not have. So what we are proposing is to streamline that payment down to four consecutive monthly payments. So when they would join, they would make a payment, and then the next three months they would make the other payments until their membership is paid off. And this would definitely streamline the process and keep our outstanding balance, hopefully, at a much lower um, amount. If this is something that the commission approves, we would like to start this uh, on July the 1st. It is something that we would need to get out to our members to make them aware. Do you have any feel for how this is going to be received by the membership? Uh, I think I think it'll be I think it'll go over okay in most memberships. Uh, the one membership, the family, it does increase their cost quite a bit to pay it off in four monthly payments as opposed to the ten months. Uh, but we feel like that the alternative would be to not offer this at all, and we do feel like that could be detrimental to membership. But we feel like this will be okay. Can you give me an example of what that family will go from per month? Uh, they would. They, they pay an initial $100 and then $50 a month for 10 months. And when the new plan, they would have four monthly payments of 150 Okay. So that one is a little bit higher than the other ones. but <coughs> You're just saying it goes up. Nothing. No, co no, yeah, no, no, cost, no cost changes. A higher check. Correct. It just pays off quicker by paying larger uh, payments each month and, and instead of spreading out 10 months. But the cost is not, we're not raising the cost. We just realize that spreading it out so far, it does leave a large balance. Well, I'm, I move to approve. I think it's a good idea. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Good things happening at the tennis complex for sure. Okay. Thomas, you gonna you gonna tell us about the the Miracle Field All Star Games? Sir, and some of you may or may not remember, we were scheduled to host the uh, Miracle League All Stars in twenty twenty one. This was pre-pandemic. So now that's been moved back to 2022. Uh, and we're still on slate to host the, the All-Star Games. And basically the Miracle League All-Stars is a uh, games and, and a special events for a weekend where athletes uh, with disabilities come from all over the country uh, and will converge on Murfreesboro and 
you know, play games, they get to experience uh, the park and, and really our plans for the games were when we started doing this, we took it, uh, our game routine or our weekly routine, we took it from the national office so that uh, the walk-up songs, the music that's played, uh, the videos on the video board, everything we do on a normal Saturday is not typical throughout the country. Uh, so we're excited to bring folks in from all over the country to see what we, we do every week. Uh, I think it'll be great exposure, not just for the Miracle Field itself, uh, but it's a great way for us to spread that culture uh, that we've created at the Miracle Field. Uh, most of you may not be aware, but there are at least four different cities since we opened our Miracle Field Park that have opened Miracle Fields. Uh, they've consulted with us to how to run their leagues and things like that. So. Uh, being able to spread that throughout the country will be a huge benefit. Uh, there is costs associated with hosting this event. We would like to enter into an agreement with the National Miracle League office, uh, and those are split. Uh, we would be responsible for housing and transportation, and of course, the games and events. Uh, and then the national office, they provide uniforms and things like that. However, money has been set aside. It's been earmarked uh, that was donated through Project 1-4 Foundation. Uh, and so we're working directly with them. We've built together a uh, community uh, committee that is, is looking at fundraising opportunity as well. So we will be raising funds for that as well as utilizing the earmarked funds uh, so we can provide a, a world-class experience for these visitors. Do you have any idea about when it will be? What part of the year? It's in September. Uh, it'll be the... <clears throat> Second week of September, weekend of September, they'll come in on Friday. We'll do an event at Sportscom. Uh, hopefully the weather will be nice enough. We can utilize the outdoor pool. Uh, we'll have some activities there at the park itself. Uh, and then on Saturday, we'll play games. We'll take it 140 athletes, so we'll have seven games total. And uh, we'll play games through the day Saturday, and then we'll go back to the embassy suites for a banquet and award ceremony and things like that, and then everybody will leave out on Sunday. Do, do you have a total cost for what this will run? Uh, there's not a total cost, but it, it's estimated that it'll, it'll be around $50,000 for housing, uh, transportation, and meals. Uh, like I said, the money is earmarked already. However, we have a committee together that's committed to trying to raise that funds in addition so that uh, we may not have to utilize or not have to use as much of the money that's been earmarked or, or designated. The Project 1-4 Foundation in the city uh, really did a great job in setting up uh, the future for Miracle League and its part by having those earmarked funds events like this, but also uh, some of the improvements we plan on uh, putting new playground surfacing down in the playground uh, and doing a few other things to, to just keep the park looking fresh and new for this event, but ongoing. Uh, but the way that it's been set up, uh, this, the league is sustained for many, many, many years to come. Awesome. Do you see this as a one-time event or an Absolutely. annual event? Yeah, it's a one-time thing. This year it's in Houston, Texas. Next year it'll be in Murfreesboro. They'll find another site. Uh, I wouldn't think it would come back here for another 10 to 20 years. There's uh, roughly 67 uh, Miracle Leagues that would are big enough to hold this. There's over 100 nationwide, but uh, I think it, they had like 67 at the time that they proposed it out, and they would really like to move it around throughout the country. Is this local committee that you reference under the fiscal impact paragraph, are they already operational? Uh, we have had a meeting. We met uh, last month, uh, and so we've started selecting community members to, to bring in uh, to that committee. We have another meeting on July 27th uh, where we hope to solidify the committee itself and also present a, uh, sponsorship, a sponsorship package where, uh, you know, People can sponsor a player, they can sponsor a team, uh, even larger donations could get them on the, the wall, there, the donor wall there at Miracle Field Park. And then you'd be in a position to perhaps give us an update on, uh, at the August meeting? On, on? On what their success is? 
Well, I would, I, I'm not sure I would have much for you by August uh, because we're meeting in the I'm 27th of July. Yeah, it's 2022. I'm thinking 2021. Okay, right. yeah, yeah, gotcha. <laughs> But we definitely can come in 2022. <laughs> I, I know we can give you an update then. I, I jumped ahead a year. I apologize. <laughs> it, it would be a good idea maybe in August or September after the committee is kind of uh, <coughs> solidified. Solidified, and you guys kind of have a route on what you think you're going to do. I mean, I think it would be a good idea to update us on at least just that part. Yeah. We can then all, you know, help, you know, I mean, in any way we can to absolutely, get that absolutely. word out and to make sure it's a success. I think it will be. Mm -hmm. I think it, if it's fifty thousand bucks, I suspect we'll be able to raise that in the community for this. Absolutely. Business. But I think uh, so. I, so, in in terms of what we're kind of voting on today, are we are we kind of saying, you know, worst case scenario, we're moving this along. That there may be some cost of right some number of tens. Well, of basically, of dollars, <coughs> we've worked with Kelly Baker and the National Miracle League uh, office and creating an agreement between the national office and the city outlining who's responsible for what. Uh, and that's what we're asking for today is approval to sign off on that agreement with the Miracle League International saying we will be the host, uh, we will host this event. And like I said, we had the backup plan. Uh, so the funds are earmarked in there. We hope to not utilize those funds, but there is a backup plan before we brought that to you to let you know. Uh, but the committee, we, we fully intend to raise the funds. Uh, I know talking with the prices, they are working on uh, getting really nice players packs for the players that come in so that, you know, what they, they get in addition to the experience, uh, you know, a bat, a, a, a glove, or different things like that. So, uh, and we're working with the Pretty Ground Company there on our committee uh, to ensure that, you know, we can our playground and our surface and everything is in, in you know top order uh, and I'm sure they'll certainly help out with some financial things as well any other questions if not I'll entertain a motion that we accept or approve the agreement with the Miracle League and and the city of Murfreesboro to host the 2022 Miracle League all-star so moved second all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? There are none. Thank and you. I, I want to encourage everybody, this Saturday is our last Saturday for Miracle League this spring season. Uh, so we'll take the summer off while it's hot. So if you've never been out or if you haven't been out in a while and you need to pick me up, come out to the Miracle Field on Saturday. They play at 9, 10, 11, and 12. As Thomas told me, if you've had a bad week, <laughs> Go on Saturday, <laughs> and I've been there, and this guy right here's got the biggest smile on than anybody. So I kind of get choked up just just watching him. But you do such an awesome job there. Okay, moving along. Um, Bart, no, we got Mark Owens. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. Going to tell us a little bit about the uh, St. Clair Senior Citizen. Yes, sir. Thank y'all for having me. Um, what we're proposing to do is having an open house on June the 24th for any senior 60 and above. Um, the purpose of this open house is twofold. One is to let um, seniors know what we're actually about. There's still a lot of miscommunication and the people don't know what St. Clair is really about. Uh, I just had a couple come in a couple of weeks ago and they thought we were a living assistant facility. We are a recreational facility for seniors. And I love giving the tours because when you see the look on their eyes, when we give them a tour and show them everything that we do, they light up. And so we're really gonna push in, uh, with this open house to let people know what we're really about. Also at this open house, they'll get to meet our instructors, tour the facility, discover a new activity, meet the staff, summer programs will be announced um, they could find a fitness class, which we have over eight fitness classes now. Um, and we're also going to be finding a box lunch like we had today with Jason's Deli. Um, we also have seniors that come in from out of state. This, is, this isn't just for Rutherford County seniors. This is for anybody sissy and plus. We have a couple that lives in Florida that drives an RV every summer. They stop in Murfreesboro for 30 days just so they can come to St. Clair. So that tells me that we're providing a, a vital service to seniors that they go out of their way to stop every year to come see us and do our programs. 
Uh, I also would like to invite anybody in this um, chamber or committee, if they would like to come by, please come by and see what we're about. Um, you know, the best advertisement a lot of time is word of mouth, but starting after this, we're going to start going to different locations where seniors conjugate just to let them know what we're about, which is a free service. Hmm. Any questions for Mark? Sounds like a good day, Mark. Do I have a motion that we uh, approve the uh, senior citizen open house? I move to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Or none. Thank, Thank you, Mark. Now we got Mr. Bart Fight. <laughs> we'll give us an update on the sports comp. Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, uh, I'm Bart Fight, superintendent at Sportscom, and some of you I haven't formally met. Uh, I've, I've met most everybody here. We're glad to have you. Hope to meet you here soon. I know some of our meetings have been postponed, hadn't been able to make it, but I want to join all our other seniors and glad we're here with me. <laughs> um, just to give you a little history of the Sportscom, uh, I was appointed superintendent out there in uh, 2001. We started construction in 1985 at Sportscom and it was opened in 1987 at a cost of $2.7 million. Square footage of Sportscom is 30,000 square feet. We did add on to our weight room, which added another 800 to 1,000 square feet. At the present time, we have nine full-time employees, and also in the winter months where, when our uh, pool and everything is closed down, we go down to 35 to 40 part-timers, but when the summer hits, it'll jump up to 80 to 100 with our lifeguards, our front desk staff, our camp counselors, and other employees that we use during the summer, concession workers also. I will go over our outdoor pool plans, uh, uh, which is Burrow Beach here at the end, of the end of the presentation to give you an update on where we are with that. We do have a, uh, the outdoor pool is the 50 meters by 25 yards. It does have, uh, holds 500,000 gallons of water, which appreciation to our Merceboro Fire Department has been a blessing and filling the pool up. Otherwise, it would take a month, not a month, but it would take a long time to fill it up. Uh, indoor pools, 25 yards by 20 yards. It is heated. We try to keep it 83 to 85 degrees, uh, and it holds 216,000 gallons of water. We have a big uh, operation at Sportscom, and I know the COVID has affected everybody. So what we did during our slower time with COVID uh, we, we concentrated on our cleaning, disinfecting all of our equipment, moving it around to, to socially distance everybody. But, uh, you know, I was telling somebody this morning, it's, get, it's beginning to get exciting again because more people are coming. Uh, I see people that hadn't been there in a while, and I, I appreciate them coming back. What we have done, we've worked with everyone, you know, on their memberships and they extended them if they were out with COVID a couple of months. So we've worked with everybody the best we can on our memberships uh, and the people that have been coming for years. But it's good to see see people. I'm sure some of you, Jimmy Earl comes out there. Of course, we lost uh, Dr. Fred Lovelace this last year, which is a great friend of Sportscom. But we have a lot of people, people that come out here and it's getting exciting to see them come back. And I appreciate them coming back also. Our summer program is getting ready to start and uh, we have all kind of activities planned. And what we did, uh, we had some training during our slower times coming up for our summer camps. We had our lifeguard training, which uh, Kyle Goss has done, and got all of our lifeguards certified to get ready uh, for open the pool. We, we had the verbal judo classes, which was taught by our police department, which taught, taught our employees how to deal with irate uh, people that come into the facility or anybody that uh, we do have a problem with, how to de-escalate any kind of problems that we have is a great course through the police department. We emphasized our customer service in getting ready for all of our summer camps. Like I mentioned, our summer camps do start next Monday, June the 7th. We will have plenty of camps this summer. Our sports camps will have five of those. 
Uh, we'll have one cheer camp, one volleyball camp, two guard start camps, three babysitting class camps. And we also will uh, we'll go along with our basketball leagues on the Wednesday night, our pickleball. We've still been able to, to work them in to uh, go 12.30 uh, to 3.30 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, and also a very popular event that's, that's been happening is our youth volleyball. I know Brittany Garrett has worked hard on that and it has is, it is really expanded. Uh, they will be uh, practicing on Tuesday nights and playing Friday nights and Saturday mornings. And they start this weekend for around six, seven weeks. Uh, as you know, we just finished up the spring fling. And if you went by McKnight Park during that time, you could see there were people all over the place. And that, that was a big event every year for us. Uh, credit to the TSSAA for getting those games in. They had, to, they had to change schedules around and do everything to get everything where it was. And they've done a great job. And of course, we had the media headquarters at Sportscom. So it was, uh, it was great to have them back also in full operation. Now I'd like to discuss <clears throat> our Borough Beach situation. I'm not sure if y'all have had some calls. I'm sure some of you probably had, but it, at the moment it is closed. Uh, what has happened, we, we have we our drains in our uh, uh, wet locker rooms, which is locker rooms going out to the outside pool, had been draining slow for a while and it got slower and slower. So they decided to go in and dig up a spot where they thought the that where it was leaking and once they got in there they found that they found the old cast iron pipe that was all underneath the floor of Sportscom which was put in 85. It was brittle, it would break in your hand, it was it was really bad shape and instead of uh, waiting any longer the decision was made to go ahead and replace that cast iron pipe you know with PVC. At the moment Hopefully by tomorrow they'll have it run run all the way under from our men's locker room all the way under the floor outside uh, through our women's locker room, the mechanical room, boiler room outside and hook it up and they're going to test it, pressure test it and see where we are there and then they'll start refilling in with rock and then they'll come back with the concrete and hopefully put the finishing touches on here in, in a couple of weeks. We don't have a definite date when we will open, but we sure will post it on our website. Uh, we'll put it on the marquee at Sportscom. Uh, and I, I really wish we could have caught it sooner, but we didn't. And I apologize to all the citizens. We're doing the best we can. I meet uh, almost daily with a construction superintendent, and he assures me they're doing everything they can. They're working 10 to 12 hours a day, uh, some, some of the Saturdays, most of the Saturdays, really. So. Hopefully we can get that open, open uh, you know, for the kids. We do have a way of offering it to some of our groups. That there's no way we could open it to the regular public due to the locker room situation. It, it, they will be closed until they get everything finished. Because if we open the pool to the public, it would be overrun with people who just don't have the room, and plus the locker rooms aren't even open. So we've, we've uh, Talk to four groups which we're going to be able to accommodate till we get the locker rooms back open. Our, our summer camps, our uh, uh, swim teams, our lap swimmers, and our exercise classes. And we've, we've advised a way uh, to get them out to the outdoor pool without going through the locker rooms. If you've been out there, you've seen where we, we've done a cut through a party room to the locker rooms in the gym, which is a com we've accommodated all the people in the indoor pool. So uh, it's been a little uh, routing problem a bit, but it seems to be working fine. A lot of people appreciate keeping that, make sure we keep the indoor pool open so we can get them where they can go dress and get out. Now we'll, what we will do, we went through a, a kind of a walkthrough yesterday how we were gonna do it. We will, uh, the summer camp kids run them through uh, the, room, the party room and then get them uh, down the ramp to the indoor pool and then we've got a, a door outside where we can walk upside the steps. It's all sidewalk to the outside gate where they can go straight into the pool. We will block off uh, the other end of the pool where the locker room doors are and the indoor pool, uh, outdoor pool doors, doors are where they'll be blocked off where nobody will gain entrance. In fact, we're gonna double block it. So as far as those groups, that's about the only groups we could have at the moment. Uh, like I said, there's no way we could get it open to the public with, with the situation we have now. But hopefully, 
uh, they're going to work hard and hopefully get this get this situated and get it get it back open as soon as possible. Uh, we hope you know we've got the word out to most everybody. I know there's been something in the paper. There's something that's probably going to be in there tomorrow. We sent them all out. You know about trying to notify the public. We've tried to tell them what's going on, and we like I said, we don't have a definite date, but we will look at that as soon as every you know two or three days i'll meet go with the superintendent and i'll talk to him where are we how are we doing so but he's doing 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 the best he can right now so hopefully we'll get that open as soon as soon as we can uh any questions questions for bart well you, you doing an awesome job out there and there's there's so many people i know you're looking forward to getting everybody back and i know you're getting for you're looking forward to getting the borough beach reopened too so won't be long be okay. back at we'll, 110%. we'll get her back open as soon as we can thank you bart thank you <clears throat> last but not least by far is melinda tate and melinda's going to give us a Probably a pretty long, lengthy update on what's going on. Good afternoon. Um, I have got a lot to go through, but I'm going to do it quickly. And you can find all this information on the website. <clears throat> we are really excited about having all of these programs available now. Um, starting with athletics, registration is open for the Murfreesboro Football League. We've got flag football and tackle. If you go to murfreesboroparks.com, look for the little green register online button and you can sign up there. Of course, Allison has her free online fitness classes and uh, that's been going on for probably over a year now. And uh, a lot of people like doing it online from the comfort of their home. Of course, we want you to come into Sportscom too, but if, uh, if it's a rainy day, you just don't feel like it, that's available. And starting next week, we've got our movies under the stars. They're free. This has been going on for probably 40 or 50 years now. Uh, the movies longer begin than, much longer than 70. <laughs> Do I hear an 80? <laughs> um, Mondays, they're held at Barfield Crescent Park. Thursdays, Richard Siegel Neighborhood Park. Fridays, Cason Lane Trailhead. And Saturdays, we partnered with the Fountains at Gateway. And for a full list of the movies, you can go to our website and our Facebook page. Juneteenth, we're going to be able to have it in person this year. And this year, we're, it's going to be a three-day event, starting with our Authors' Night book signing. And uh, this will be at Bradley Academy, Thursday, June 17th from 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. And these are local authors. I encourage everyone to come out and meet them. Then Friday, June 18th, we have our youth night um, with our youth art exhibition. Well, um, it's gonna be a, a celebration that night for the youth, uh, starting at four o'clock and lasting till 7.30 p.m. I'm sure there'll be food and, and music, and we encourage the youth in our community to come to that. And all of this culminates in our Juneteenth celebration on June 19th at Bradley Academy, mainly uh, the street in front of Bradley Academy. If you haven't been in person, highly encourage you to go. It's a, a great celebration uh, for everyone. Our Guardians of the Greenway, they have been very active this spring. We'll meet June 3rd at Cannonsburg Trailhead and July 1st at the Walter Hill Trailhead. You don't have to bring anything. We provide the, the bags, the trash grabbers, gloves. Um, it's a good way to, to pick up all the litter and trash that finds its way along our greenway. We still have a few summer camps that are open. Um, you can register online or in person and uh, I think a lot of them are filled up, but we still have maybe four or five that have spots available. 
The middle half registration opened today. Uh, we've already got almost 400 people signed up in the last four hours. Um, the event is October 9th. Uh, it uh, starts at 7 a.m. And this year, the limit is 1,500 participants. And by the way, today is uh, Global Running Day. I encourage you to get out and, I mean, run for five seconds. It doesn't matter. Just <laughs> uh, jog up to the mailbox or something. Splash Out is another one of our more popular programs. It's free, and the kids love it. The parents love it, too. June 24th at Richard Siegel Soccer Complex, July 8th, Barfield Crescent Park, and July 22nd, Old Fort Park, from 1.30 to 3. Just wear um, some water shoes, your bathing suit. The fire department comes out and sprays water on the kids. They love it. <laughs> Boat Day, Saturday, June 26th at the Manson Trailhead. Um, this is perfect. It's free, and it's perfect if you aren't sure if you would like to kayak, if you've never been in a kayak or a canoe. <clears throat> it's a good opportunity to come and try it out. We rope the river off, so you just paddle around in a, a little area. Our volunteers will show you how to hold the paddle, which um, I learned I was holding mine backwards one time and couldn't figure out why I was going around in circles. But uh, they will help you do that, show you how to get in, um, and you can test out different types of watercraft to see what kind uh, you prefer. Um, <laughs> this is a new program, the Barfield Hiking Marathon. So in July, you have all the month of July to hike 26.2 miles. And you can register June 1st through July 15th online. Is there something we need to be concerned about <laughs> out there? Just well, I was going to say Nate posed for the picture, but since <laughs> he's not here to, to defend himself, that wouldn't be very nice. So. <laughs> Perfect. A lot of mystery. <laughs> um, a lot of people have asked about the 4th of July celebration. We are having it, and it will be the same place as last year. The fireworks will be shot on uh, from Medical Center Boulevard near the fire department, and we partnered with the Fountains of Gateway. They have got lots of activities planned, band, and um, things like that. The fireworks do start at 9, and... Um, we encourage everyone to just look up in the sky that night and celebrate with us. The St. Clair Street seniors um, have been very active and uh, being very creative the past year. Their uh, City Hall Rotunda exhibit runs uh, through June 24th. On June 11th, there will be a virtual tour of the exhibit if you'd like to see that. I encourage you to see it in person if you can. There's some amazing works of art. And if anyone is uh, got excited about seeing all these different events and would love to come work for Parks and Rec because, you know, we, <laughs> we play for our work, um, we are going to be a part of the Murfreesboro City Job Fair Monday, next Monday, June 7th from 1 to 4 at McFadden and I encourage if anyone who is thinking they might want to start a career with Parks and Rec we've got um, so many different opportunities I encourage you to come out there of course our website um, is full of things to do we've got our calendar of events and programs and you can uh, click on view all events and you can filter it by what's going on that day, that week, that month. You can type in a word like hikes and all the hikes will come up. This is what's going on this week. We Thursday is just crazy. <laughs> I encourage you to, to take a look at the calendar and I'm sure there's probably something on there that you would like to do. You can also find us on Facebook on one of our 15 Facebook pages and um, we try to keep that updated as well. 
Does anybody have any questions? We're very busy. <laughs> yeah, Melinda, thank you so much. And uh, thank you. Ali, that's great to see all the programs and activities. And thanks to you and the entire staff of the, of the Recreation uh, Department because uh, second to none in the world and uh, couldn't do any of this without all of y'all. So thank you. Thank you. That's uh, all of our new business today. And uh, is there any other business? Anybody wants to speak? Eddie, can I make a quick comment Certainly. about golf? Golf's going full, full wide open right now. Uh, I think COVID was a kind of a boon to golf because people could get out, could be in the, in the fresh air, could play social distance, and, and it's hard to get a tee time sometimes. We have uh, started the Kids Play Free program. Kids in Murfreesboro, all they got to do is come sign up they get a card, they can play free at the six hole course there, uh, uh, Bloomfield Acres, anytime they wanna come play. It's a good, uh, it's sponsored basically by PGA Pro Scott Stallings, who lives in Knoxville. He is uh, uh, on the tour. Uh, he provides a lot of the funds for that. Uh, Tennessee Golf Association provides funds for it and there, there have been some uh, uh, private donations, and I think there's some other sources, but uh, they pay for it. Uh, Scott's done a, a great job. Uh, but uh, I don't know how well we've advertised this. Uh, uh, Leroy asked me about it earlier, and, and but we have uh, we have begun that. So if you if you want if you got a kid who wants to play golf, you can play free all year. Ages? I believe it goes. Uh, and, 17 is the cutoff. Is there a minimum age? Okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> through 17, through age 17. It's a great program. Mm -hmm. That's awesome, Don. Yeah, that's all I've got. Eddie. Okay, Thank you. very good. Great update. Thank you. If there is no other business, we'll stand adjourned today. Thank you. <laughs>